Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Miriam and in today's video, I'll be talking all about how to land your first internship. I'm definitely no pro at this, but over the year, I've learned a couple of strategies from my mentors and upper years that have really worked and would love to share with you guys because I know how stressful it can be to find that first job and to get your foot into the door. A lot of these advice will be applicable to any students, no matter if you go to Waterloo or not, but a couple of the advice near the end of the video will be more specific to people applying on the Waterloo job portal called Waterloo Works. I'll definitely leave timestamps down below so that you can skip to whatever part is more applicable to you. All right, so the first step to this whole process is applying. And in order to apply, you will usually need a resume. Um, so a couple of advice that I have around this is make sure your resume is only one page long, especially for your first internship. And I think all throughout university, most jobs will only look for a one page resume because recruiters usually spend less than 10 seconds on each resume. So if it's longer than that, I don't think they'll be skimming through. So make sure your resume is one page long concise and easy to read. I know there's a whole controversial debate between one column and two column resumes, um, but I personally like one column resumes because it's easier to read from top to bottom and it's easier to just skim through whatever section you want in your resume. Get your resume read by as many people as you can because spelling mistakes do happen and did happen to me. Thankfully, I got my friend to catch it before applying to any jobs. And also Waterloo has a lot of clubs that specifically have events to get your resume reviewed. So clubs like Women Computer Science and Tech Plus, and there's so many other more that have events to get your resume read and give you very valuable advice from upper years who have gone through this process multiple times. So make sure you take use of those and go to those events because I have gained a lot of valuable advice and I feel like after every resume critique, I've changed something on my resume. And one thing to keep in mind is that it's your resume. So if a critiquer says something that you don't really agree with, that's okay. You don't have to follow everything that they say. So on my resume, I first had my name and then a bunch of links. So I had my email link, my GitHub, LinkedIn, and personal website. And the five main sections I had on my resume were a skills section where I put my languages and tools that I knew. And then I also had a section for my education where I talked about my GPA, relevant courses, and I also put a couple of scholarships that I've received. The next section is my experience, which I only had one job prior to applying which was like a QA role, so not very specific to the jobs I was applying to, but I did write some bullet points on this and how I worked in the team and the technologies I used. So it did help me in that sense. But if you don't have experience, no worries at all. I think you should use this section more to explain about projects and hackathons that you've been to. Um, I personally wrote down four different projects on my resume. So yeah, make sure in your project section, you really describe what you built, why you built it, the technologies that you use. If you have like a GitHub link, um, I had an icon that you can press on to go to the GitHub link. I would definitely recommend that. So the last section I had was extracurriculars. Um, I was actually surprised that many recruiters asked me about this section on my resume. If you are part of extracurriculars at your university or at your school, definitely write them because it does show transparency transferable skills in the workforce. Also when applying, a lot of jobs ask for cover letters. I personally will only write a cover letter for a job that I really want. So I didn't write a cover letter for every job that I wanted, but one thing that I will say is that the current job that I'm working at and my second choice that I was debating between, I wrote cover letters for both of them. So I do think that cover letters can only improve your chances, but in a cover letter, uh, how I wrote them was that I usually had three paragraphs, an intro of who I am, why I'm applying to this company. Second paragraph, I would talk about like a project that I did and my process through it was a hackathon project, what it was, why I built it a very detailed explanation of why I built a specific project. And that project that I picked was usually geared to the job skills and the job experience. And the third paragraph is just wrapping it up. I would also give more details on why I want to 
join this company in a specific project that piqued my interest. So it really shows that you did a lot of research. That's why I'm saying to not apply to every job you want with a cover letter because it's going to take a lot of time. So I'd only apply to jobs that I really, really, really want with cover letters because it will give you an extra chance. All right, so the next part of the application process is interviews. So hopefully after you submitted your resume and your information, then you'll be contacted with the next steps. I do have a couple of advice for this part of the process. My biggest advice is practice. Practice behavioral and technical questions. Most internships, like they know that it's your first internship, won't have a technical section, but that's not guaranteed. So it's better to practice and be ready for that than go into it and they give you a technical and you're like, mm, I don't know. And so make sure you practice. So for behavioral interviews, I would say practicing general questions. I left a bunch of questions in the description box with questions that I've been asked. Take a look at that and try to practice it on your own. Also make sure that you know your resume front to back because they, they're going to ask you a lot of specific questions. And if you don't know, that will kind of be like a red flag. So make sure whatever you're writing on your resume, you have a clear understanding and you know what to say for it if they ask you about it. The next thing that I would practice for is technical interviews. Not a lot of jobs will ask for technical interviews, especially if you're on the lower first year, second year range. But out of my 15 interviews, four of them had technical components to them. So I would definitely practice questions. And the two platforms that I would recommend is LeetCode and Brilliant. LeetCode has over hundreds of practice problems that you can do, ranging from different levels. I would recommend doing easy or medium questions because that is mostly what will come up during your interview if you're applying for your first internship. Um, and I left a link to LeetCode's top 50 easy questions. I tried doing at least 30 of them before going to my interviews and it really, really did help. A couple of questions came up during my interview, which was really nice because I already had practice. So practicing your data structures and algorithms is super, super important. And I know in first year, they don't really teach that. So that's why Brilliant can help. Brilliant is a platform that allows you to use hands-on learning in math, computer science, and science. What I really like about Brilliant is that instead of memorizing algorithms and data structure concepts, it really allows you to understand it better. The platform really helps you build problem solving skills, which I think is super important in interviews because there are thousands of leak code questions that could be asked during the interview and it's impossible to memorize every single solution. It's better to understand structures like hash maps, stacks, trees, graphs, um, sorting algorithms, instead of really memorizing each one of the s problems that could be asked, which I think is almost impossible. So that's what I really like about Brilliant. And there are thousands of lessons that you can learn from. This is the binary search lesson in the Algorithm Fundamentals course. As you can see, the lessons are very interactive, which is what I like because I learn best when I put it into practice. So this is the perfect way for testing my knowledge after reading each lesson. Get started today for free. Join millions of people who are using it already. Use my code to get 20% off. And I hope you ace your technical interview as well and get that dream job. At the end of your interview, make sure to also ask questions that are specific to the company and the team to show that you've done lots of research. It's also important to think about how you felt after the interview. Did you like the people you were talking to? Did you see yourself working with them? These are questions that you should ask yourself because it's important to not only get the job, but you will enjoy working there for your four months. And keep in mind that not all interviews will go well. If it doesn't go well, I don't think you should be super upset, especially if the interviewer wasn't very nice. You wouldn't want to work with them, so don't be upset. There will be plenty, plenty of interviews in the future, but I always think that after every interview, there will be something to learn from it. All right, so now I'll take a little bit of time to talk about some advice that I've gained or learned 
from applying through Waterloo's job portal called Waterloo Works. These advice are more specific to Waterloo students. So it's important to know that in Waterloo Works, portal only opens four months before starting your job. So for instance, if your next work term is summer 2022, the portal will only open winter 2022. So you can't use the portal before then. What a lot of people do is apply externally. So also keep that in mind as an option be because you're only allowed to apply to 50 jobs on Waterloo Works and sometimes that's not enough because there's over 2,000 jobs sometimes on the portal. So narrowing down to 50 can be very hard. So my strategy with this was I applied to 25 places that I met most of the qualifications for. And then I would spend 15 job applications for places that I think I had a good shot, but wasn't a place that I wanted to work at. So a lot of QA roles. And then I would apply to around 10 jobs where I thought that I had barely any chance, but I did want to shoot my shot to see what it would be like if I did get that interview. A lot of these jobs I didn't end up getting an interview for, but I did want to see what it would be like. So I think it's good to plan a strategy when applying to these jobs. Also, another advice I have for first years is that on Waterloo Works, on every job, you can see details, information of the job and how many percentage of each years of students they hire. So if that makes sense, like they have a pie chart and they show that this job hires 14% of first co-ops. So I use this chart a lot when making these decisions on how much of a chance I have to get the job um, and I only applied to jobs that had um, a percentage of hiring first years more than 10% so that gave me more chances of getting the job. Um, I definitely recommend this strategy to anyone who's also looking for their first co-op and they have to decide which 50 they're going to apply to so applying to these jobs that you have a higher percentage of getting at will allow you to leverage. So the timeline for Waterloo Works is that it moves really, really fast. So as soon as you start your term and you have to be applying that term, you will start applying to jobs almost immediately. And it's a bit overwhelming because you got to apply and also settle in with your courses. So having that resume and like a, a general cover letter ready will help you ease this process a little bit more. After you apply in the first two weeks and by the fourth week, that's when decisions come out. And then you have 24 hours to rank the companies that ranked you to see which one you get. And so how the algorithm works is that the lowest sum gets the job. So for instance, if a company, let's say company X ranked me one and I rank them one, that's automatically a match. You get that job. But if you get ranked, you don't see what number they ranked you. It could be from two to 10. So let's say company X ranked me five and I rank them number one. Then the sum is six, but then they have to compare the other sums to see if my sum is the lowest, if that makes sense. So it's a bit scary if you see ranked and not one, because then you're not sure if you get the job, but don't lose hope, keep applying, keep putting in lots of work, you will eventually get a good job. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on Instagram. I love answering your questions. But until next time, I will see you all later. Bye, everyone.